Ladies and gents, welcome to another episode of Masters of Marketing. In this episode, I have with me the founder and CEO of Switch Foods, Edward Hamoud. Switch is a tech food company focused on producing healthy and delicious meat alternatives. We discussed how he's marketing Switch, how he started marketing it, how he does it today. We discussed the benefits of working with influencers for his brand, how he's building a brand, and much more. Tune in and enjoy the episode. Edward Hamoud. <laughs> Who is Edward Hamoud? What is Switch? And what is your role in the business? So, um, Switch is a food tech startup incubated in the UAE, focused on producing delicious, nutritious, and healthy uh, meat alternatives. Uh, we basically see a huge gap in the region in terms of people's awareness around the risk associated with overconsumption of meat. And our main objective is to produce products, foods that can be used as tools for reducing their meat consumption. Uh, we have our production facility, our R&D labs in Kizad, Abu Dhabi. Uh, we've been, uh, the project has started in mid-2021. Uh, we went on the markets in June 2023, and today we're available in four regional markets going into six. Myself, um, I was born and raised in Syria. I was educated in the US. I worked in corporate America for about five years. I went back to get my MBA from uh, Boston University, went back to the region to, to Syria to join the family business. That shifted um, and, and uh, I collaborated with a partner to, to start a food business. So our family was, so I grew up in an entrepreneurial household uh, a business that was created by my great grandfather, grandfather, my father, and my uncle. So we were always around business. Uh, we always discussed uh, 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 entrepreneurship and 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 growth and coming up with new ideas, new projects. We were in industry, in trade. Uh, we were in real estate development. Uh, we were in real estate. We were very very diversified, decent size uh, family business. When I went in together with my partner, we went, we ventured into the food business and in the span of six, seven years between 2005, 2012 built, you know, one of the, I would say most significant food, food businesses in Syria until obviously the war happened. Um, we left to Beirut, uh, which is where we have a, we have a family home. We have most of our family for a year. It was, I closely figured out that it wasn't the right place at the time from a social and economical perspective um, to raise my family. I had a two-year-old daughter, went back to the States, and then circumstances led me back to the to the region through, through Dubai. Um, I continued uh, running my business uh, in the region from Dubai until I joined and led one of the largest agri-commodity groups in the UAE out of Abu Dhabi for six years, and then I ventured um, to create Switch Foods in 2021. Um, raised money in 20, raised capital, um, went into R&D, built the facility, and onto the markets. Right, okay. So, what is Switch Foods? What are, you, what are the products that you sell? So, today, um, we find that there is a huge gap in the region um, in terms of awareness around the uh, impact of foods that we consume in general, right? And we look at our region as having some of the most significant uh, non-transmittal diseases globally. So we have twice the global obesity rate in the region. We have one and a half times the growth um, rate, population growth. We have some of the highest diabetes rates per capita, cancer rates per capita, blood disease per capita, and the main cause of death is cardiovascular. And all of these are related to food we consume, right? It's not the air we, we inhale. Um, Yes, our quality of life could be better in terms of exercise and sports. But at the end of the day, our food intake, you know, you know more than me, plays a big role in how we 
how we live, our energy, our, our, our blood uh, levels and all of that. In this region, um, we consume about three to three and a half times the recommended meat consumption per capita globally, right? So the, the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, as part of the United Nations, recommends meat consumption about 20 kilos per year or 22 kilos per year. We consume about 75 in this region. And scientific research, proven scientific research over decades, you know, from top-notch universities, Harvard, uh, Yale, Stanford, have shown that high consumption of meats, red meat or white meat, is directly associated to developing certain types of cancer, especially um, stomach and colon and intestine cancers. Uh, it's highly related to developing type 2 diabetes. Uh, it's got high fat, so it's highly, highly related to uh, overweight and obesity and many other diseases, right? And today in the West, uh, in the US or in Europe, we see a very high level of awareness about that. So we see naturally people understand the effect of food consumption, let alone met meat consumption on their personal health and then on the environment. Um, and today, if you go to mature markets like the US or Europe, you see a lot of alternatives, right? If you go to a supermarket in in Germany, you see four or five aisles of alternative proteins, right? Because you need the protein. So people tell me, okay, if we wanna reduce meat, we can go into vegetables, right? We can go into pulses, legumes. Yes, you can but you're missing a lot of the elements of, of the meat. And when we look at the market here, we see that one, the awareness is missing, and two, the tools to help people reduce their meat intake are not available, right? So what we try to do is to come in and fill that void with healthy products, nutritious products. So our products are 100% natural. We don't use any natural identical. We don't use any synthetics in our products. Short list of ingredients. Right, so it's very lightly processed. We use a pea protein as base, so because it has a very similar amino acid profile to that of meat, of conventional meat. Obviously, it, we don't have the hormones and antibiotics that you, that you find in conventional meat because also people don't realize that the quality of meat that they consume or that we consume as individuals today is not is not what it used to be 20 years ago. It not, it's not what it used to be 40 years ago. It's not what it used to be 60 years ago when, when animals were grazing out in the prairies. Today, factory farming has taken over the industry. And when you talk about factory farming, you talk about preventive antibiotics, you talk about hormones, you talk a lot about you talk a lot about a lot of stuff that get put into this animal to make him grow faster, grow bigger, um, so it can get slaughtered faster and quicker. Yeah. All of this is transferred into our human bodies and is developing disease more and more. And But there are lobbies around, around the world that suppress this information. Of course. Because at the end of the day, meat is a $1.4 trillion mm -hmm. industry. So switch is, switch doesn't, switch as a, as a brand or as a, as a product or as a company doesn't want to intrude into people's lifestyles. So I'm not vegan myself. Or I'm not vegetarian. But I went from consuming meat five or six times a week like we all do in this region to consuming meat once or twice a month when it's a whole cut meat, when it's clean meat, where I know where the source is. Um, and for my protein intake to get full, we use switch at home. Right. My my daughter is vegetarian. My son uh, doesn't tolerate meat well or chicken, so we eat switch in order to have our protein intake. Interesting. I mean, that's a whole discussion. We can go into the <laughs> the specifics about the amino acids, the BCAAs, and uh, I'm not a nutritionist, by the way, right? So no, so like, don't challenge me on those. No, no I'm not I, challenging I, you. I, I I'm, the, I'm interested. I'm right, not at all. I'm not interested. I no, we can speak about I, them. Uh, yeah, F from a, I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, we have a chief R and D officer, we have a head of nutrition, yeah. we have a full R and D team at Switch yeah. that looks into nu uh, at nutrition because, again, I come from the other side of the spectrum. 
Yeah. I used to run wheat flour, feed milling, yeah. burger pulses, dairy farms, poultry farms for most of my career. <laughs> yeah. And I looked at my business <laughs> as a P&L. Mm. Yeah. I never understood the impact of the business right. that, I, that I ran until I had an unfortunate health issue with the family that after you know, long research, multiple um, hos hospital visits in mm. different countries, in different regions, we figure out that it was related to food. And that's when I decided, okay, what are we really eating as human beings? Yeah. And, and I said, okay, no, we gotta, we gotta change. And, and, and I understood the opportunity. Um, and I understood, you know, f for the first time in my life, I had mm -hmm. a, I have a business today that runs with a strong purpose, a strong mission, a strong values and a strong impact. Um, and the ambition is 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 very um the ambition is is very modest in a way that today we only want to increase plant-based food adoption in the region yeah. to reach global levels right. so today we <clears throat> see that plant-based meat plant-based food adoption in in diets in this region is 10 percent of what it is in in the uk or in europe or in the us right and um, I asked you about the products that you're selling. And uh, I mean, we started talking because <laughs> we, we actually, I was sitting next to your chef <laughs> on the on plane, the, plane. The, fir the first time, right? You so were sitting on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, uh, I was vegetarian. I started eating now fish since uh, last month, since I was on holiday. I started eating fish after probably, I don't know, eight, nine years of not eating meat at all. And I was vegan for two or three years. And, um, and, and, you know, funny enough, I was sitting next to your chef and and i'm i consume it weekly and i told you i consume switch weekly and the first time i ate the kebabs i almost got sick because it tastes so much of the of kebab yeah. right <laughs> like i was like no way like this is definitely you know what i mean you feel disgust the first time you eat it absolutely. if you're vegan absolutely if you're so, vegetarian so if we look at the <clears throat> so so if we look from an impact perspective or from mm. a purpose perspective vegans and vegetarians are all are already doing good for themselves and for the environment right mm. so what's really our target consumer it's those carnivores right the people yeah. who over consume meat and these people if they eat lean meat yeah right like if you today eat lean meat yourself right and you, if you're eating it from a right source like an organic source for example 100%. right it doesn't have it's, all it's, the pesticides it's and completely different then it's then it's okay and it's actually good probably better than you know, eating only plants. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So, but most people cannot afford it, and most people don't eat it. One hundred percent. Yeah. So, to that point, so I spoke about from an impact perspective, mm. from a commercial perspective as well. You cannot build a business around vegans and vegetarians, mm. right? Um, because they're a small percentage of the yeah. population. They're probably not in this region. Um, mm. they're globally, eight to, you can. They're yeah. eight to ten percent globally. Mm. Mm. And they're, most of them are concentrated in Southeast Asia, in India, and in Nepal for religious regions. And those people have their own diets, right? So commercially, you cannot build a business just targeting them, especially mm. in this region. So our target is to tell those meat consumers, again, today you're consuming meat every day, right? To your point, 50% uh, of meat consumption in the, in the region is in the form of minced meat. Now, what is minced meat, mm. right? It comes in into every Levantine dish, all at home, even the burgers, the sausages, all of that. Minced right. meat is like the, the, the remainders of meat cuts, right? Mm. It gets put together at the end of the day, a lot of fat, a lot yep. of stuff in it gets, gets minced mm. and gets put into, into boxes. So you don't really know Correct. what you're eating. Right. And, and as you said, it comes with a lot of fat because these are the remainders of the pieces of meat. Of the meat. Mm. You mince it together so people don't mm. see it because it's visually unattractive. Right. You put it in mince and you mince and it. And you put a lot of spices it. with it. Right. And, and, yeah, yeah. A lot of flavors, a lot, a lot of, flavors. of spices. Yeah. We can go into the meat processing business. Mm. That's a totally different topic because people think that meat, you know, people just slaughter the, the, the animal and it gets put mm. into package. No, no, no. There's a lot of processing that goes into the meat business. Mm. That's how you can you can you can you can price it so so low um so our intention but and today when you talk also maybe you're vegan or you're vegan so you understand the that the human body needs protein today um if you eat a bowl of salad you can eat two or three bowls of salad and you continue to be hungry right but if you put a 
piece of chicken breast or salmon or whatever, you get full because you need that protein that creates that feeling of fullness. If you eat a, 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 a bowl of spaghetti, you can eat a, two, three bowls of spaghetti and you'll still be hungry, right? Yeah. As long as you put a sauce in it, some bolognese, some meat, you'll get full and you'll get the energy and the protein. So the protein is needed. Correct. Not on a daily basis, not two meals per day, but it, it is needed. What we're trying to do is target those carnivores that we're talking about to say, okay, you're probably not going to switch from eating meat every day to eating rice and beans, right? Or eating green beans. It's too big of a shift. But today, if you, you reduce your meat consumption from five to three days a week, from six to three days a week, from three to one day a week. Yeah. And those other days, if you feel like a burger, you can have a great burger, right? That tastes taste is subjective as well, right? That yeah. tastes great. Let's not always compare it to the burger. It is, it's a great burger, but have it with a third of the fat, without the antibiotics and the hormones, without the cholesterol, mm -hmm. right? Without the harm that is today you get in factory farmed meat because again, meat is different levels. So when we create that kebab that you told me got you sick, yeah. you're not my my target audience is the guy who's buying kebab off any of these restaurants right. today, right? And they're gonna have that kebab and they're gonna say, "Whoa, that's actually maybe better than the kebab I'm yeah. having." But instead of having thirty five percent fat in it, I have thirteen yeah, percent right. fat. I have, I, it's high in protein. It's actually high in protein. It's got zero cholesterol and it doesn't have the the, the antibiotics. And and for the you know for the religious Muslims, they know for sure that it's halal as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. it's, it's plant based, yes. so <laughs> exactly. So so we have the halal yeah. mark on mm. it, but it's a very easy process because yeah. because it's all plants. Mm. Our facility is an allergen free, dairy free, meat free facility to begin mm. with. So for Europe will be good and for the States will be good because there it's difficult to trust that it's halal. And, you know, here probably there are more regulations around halal meat. Still here, still here. You know, I mm. come from that industry, as I said, and people, for example, here prefer meat that comes from Turkey than meat comes from mm. that comes from the US or Brazil because they, know. they mm. trust the halal process in Turkey or, or in a Muslim country more than they trust it in the West. Good stuff. All right, moving to marketing. How did you start marketing switch? And how do you market it today? So I don't think so. We're, we're just a one year old company at the end of the day since we launched. Right. So we didn't really shift in how we mark, how we started to how we market it today. Our first positioning is it's a delicious product. Forget the the health, nutrition, the, 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 the sustainability element of it. Mm the product has to be delicious. I sit on a lot of panels. I go to a lot of conferences around food tech and, you know, other founders, other CEOs, they say, you know, we have 40 PhDs on our, on our, on our payroll. We run this R and D. I tell them, no, I worked with 15 different chefs. We have yeah. a re an R and D. I work <laughs> actually with a lot of, I spent six, seven months on my own traveling between the U S Canada and Europe, trying to learn the tech. You know, then with my head of product development, talking to food engineers, food scientists, university research centers, labs across the world to try to learn technology and use the good part of it. Right. Because there's also different aspects of food tech that not necessarily fits with what we're trying to sell at Switch or how we're trying to position ourselves at Switch. Um, so. Switch is, first of all, a delicious product. It is right. If you it eat is. it, whether you want to <laughs> forget about comparing it to anything, the kebab mm. is delicious. The kafta is delicious. Yeah. The suju yeah, is, is amazing. Yeah. The minced and meat. And the burger you, patties are right? good. Right. Yeah. So that's number one. Number two, it offers a seamless transition mm. from conventional meat. So I don't want to sit down with you and give you a catalog mm. or with any of our consumers of how to use it. You have to use it exactly like you do with meat. So a burger, you take it out. You put it on the grill, you put it on, on a charcoal grill, on a wood grill, on, on a flat top, on a, on a pan, yeah. put a little bit of oil. So you do it exactly like you do. We talk about convenience because this product, since we don't use any preservatives in it, you can cook it. So we, we, it's in frozen form, right? 
So you don't have to remember, I don't know how many times your mom yeah. or your wife remember, oh my God, I forgot to get the meat out of the freezer right. the night before or the day of. And here you can cook it directly from frozen. You can throw it and cook it, but it offers it offers that convenience of cooking in six, seven minutes directly from freezer. Right. So the, these are the overarching, um, let's call them va values or proposition of switch. Then obviously we talk about the health. Uh, which we see that it's it's a huge battle for us, an uphill battle because the level of awareness in this region is very low on some of the very basic elements. So to give you a few numbers, 70% um, of households in the UAE consume chicken on a daily basis. Right. 30% consume red meat on a daily basis. Daily. Right. Right. 30% of households or of individuals in the UAE are aware of the effect of meat, red meat on their human health. Only 30. 20 understand the effect of, cons of red meat consumption on the environment. If you, if you go to Europe, those numbers go from 30 to 90 and from 20 to 70 or 80. Yeah. Right? So... <clears throat> We also then pitch or try to educate the consumer, create that awareness because, you know, the funnel starts with awareness, right? You cannot go into consideration or conversion or loyalty without creating that awareness. So the awareness, number one, is that you have a delicious product. Awareness, number two, is that it's convenient. Number three is that it's healthy, right? Everybody today is looking for healthy products. People, you know, when I grew up in the U.S. or, or uh, you know, I spent a lot of my youth in the U.S., I, I spent 11 years, it was all about the cheaper uh, yeah. uh, meal, mm -hmm. right? The three ninety nine dollars Whopper with, with, with Coke and fries. McDonald's would go with like two ninety nine, yeah. right? It's about getting food cheaper and cheaper. And people were happy about that, mm -hmm. right? And And... And in my days, if I did something good at home, if I finished my chores or did my studies, my parents would take me to McDonald's yeah. when we went to the when we went to the U.S. <laughs> right, or give me a Tang or Coke as mm. in the afternoon. Today, my kids, they're fourteen and ten, they've never been to a fast food restaurant, yeah. right? Never in their life. They don't drink Pepsi and Coke. The education also among our parents was they, that generation didn't have that education. Today, we're counting on this, on people's on the trend or on the fact that people are more educated mm. and are looking for ways to better their lives. So we see the, the, we see the increase in wellness, um, in people's interest in wellness, wellness and longevity, right, in health. But at the same time, we see the numbers of hospitals that are opening, right? Uh, the number of wellness center, it's because we have more disease, non-communicative disease that are mostly related to our food intake. Right. So these are the elements that we, this is how we position switch. Product, product quality, convenience, and then health benefits. And then obviously for the people who are more interested, we talk about the nutrition as well. Um, online and offline, we have, we have, a, 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 we have our, our, our R&D team, our nutrition team, always available to talk about, you know, the amino acid profile, how is that compared to meat? And what's important for, for you to know and for the audience to know is that we're not like any, we're, we're not obsessed with 100% parity with meat, right? So I get asked a lot of questions like, what's your bioavailability, bio or It's very close to meat, right? Yeah. Yes, we don't have the same iron level of meat, Right, we don't have the B12 that meat has, but we don't. This is by design. We created the product. I have ingredients companies, you know, calling us regularly, telling us, "Yeah, you, you, you if you, we can sell you um, um, omega three, we can sell you yeah. B12, we can to enrich your product with it." But you're using synthetic ingredients to enrich your product, which we don't want to do. We want to remain true to our core values, which is 100 percent all natural ingredients, clean label, um, um, short list of ingredients. Right. <clears throat> Interesting. And um, so how do you market it? Which channels do you use? Um, 
So, so yeah, we which channels do you use? To obviously, invest? we're a startup, so we mm. don't have the the TV and budget, you know, the the, the, the huge budgets. But we still, so we, we market on social social and digital a lot. Um, obviously, um, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. Um, uh, we have our channels there. Sometimes we boost, sometimes we don't. We use some influencers, especially around like, you know, recipe creation and all of that to show our audience that how easy it is to use the product and how convenient and how seamless it is yeah. from, um, uh, from you know, to transition from meat. We also had a, I don't know if you, if you, you told me saw it one time, we had an outdoor campaign for a month yeah, in, May, la, in May 2024. Nakhil Mall. Upon. It was it was across eight bridges on Sheikh Zayed. Ah, the outdoor one. He yeah, said. Okay. outdoor. Yeah. It was it was an yeah. outdoor, in mall and in store. Yeah, uh, uh, okay. and in the metros as well. So we wanted to cover the whole consumer journey. Nice. Um, and we wanted to create curiosity. Yeah. So we didn't want to we didn't want to overload the consumer with, with information. Our idea was to create enough cur curiosity and have it you know funny and witty, to remain top of mind of, of whoever saw these ads. So we ran a, a, an outdoor campaign that, that was built around, technically it's a salad. Yeah. So we had a burger, like a delicious burger, cheeseburger on, 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 on billboards that said, technically it's a salad, right? Mm. Because it's made yeah. of only vegetables. So when people saw a burger and technically it's a salad next to it, they're like, yo, yeah. what is this? Yeah. So it created that curiosity. Then we had another execution that showed our kebabs mm. and says, eat your greens, right. right? How many times do we hear, eat your greens, eat yeah. your greens, eat greens, eat your greens. This time you have a picture of a kebab that's telling you eat your greens. So we had great feedback on it. Mm. Um, what, about I, what about sales? Did it uh, did sales change? Did it pick up after that? Uh, um, not really, mm. not really, to be honest with you. I mean, we didn't see, we didn't, we, you know, we see growth month on month, right. but we didn't see that huge spike, spike in, yeah. in, in, okay. in, in sales, to be honest. For how long and was it? A month, four weeks. Okay, yeah. And, but our objective was not, really conversion, right? Mm. Our objection was, or traffic, our objections was, uh, our objective was awareness. Awareness. To create awareness around the brand, mm. uh, to, 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 to use a tone of voice that resonates with us as a brand. We don't, we're not a medicinal company. We're, uh, we don't take ourselves too seriously. Mm. Um, we're, we're fun. We're trying to create a good product. We're trying to create a product for people to enjoy. Yeah. Um, a tech company, <laughs> right? A tech company, a food yeah. tech company, which right. also still in this in the region, people don't really mm. know what it means, right? Right. But I think the governments and 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 larger authorities now understand that you know food tech is essential for this region to survive for food sovereignty, right? Because obviously, large scale agriculture doesn't work. Food scarcity and growing populations is going to put more and more stress on the food systems globally. Right. Makes sense. Did you figure out a way to measure return on investment for specific campaigns? Like now you, I know that you invest in influencer marketing, you invest in social media and boosting posts and these, uh, you know, out of home campaigns that you, that one campaign that you discussed. Do you, do you know what is bringing you more results? Um, or you're just buying based on impressions and, you're thinking about it from a brand marketing exercise and you don't necessarily need to uh, manage or monitor or analyze uh, that data. No, we do. Okay. We have a marketing team within the company. We have a marketing director and marketing manager and we work with different agencies. We've worked in the past and we, we do now. And we try to understand, first of all, set the KPIs before we run a campaign. Right. So what is our objective from this campaign? Is it awareness? Is it consideration? Is it traffic? Do we want to lead them to, to, to a purchase decision or to a purchase point? And then we track it. Right. Mm -hmm. So we set KPIs in terms of reach, in terms of impressions, in terms of clicks, um, um, in terms of conversion. Right. Because we measure. So today, we're, if we're running a campaign that leads um, um, the viewer to an online uh, purchase platform, whether it's Talabat, Karim, 
Carrefour, whatever it is, we want to measure that journey and see how many views, how yeah. many, how many, you know, unique accounts, so reach, uh, impressions, how many clicks on the shop now button or whatever, yeah. how many people went to, let's say, Talabat and clicked on purchase right. uh, and, and purchased, you know, so, so we measure that. It's not il always as, you know, marketing agencies make it to seem as simple as it is. Yeah. Um, the data is a lot of time. You, you got a lot of data, mm -hmm. but the data analysis is, is core. You need right. to analyze the data and understand mm -hmm. if you're really achieving your objectives. Right. And at the end of the day, the objectives that you put for your campaign, you measure them against this, these right. data points. And of course, it's difficult for you to measure return on investment for such campaigns because most of your campaigns or most of your budget is being invested in, in brand and in brand marketing. Right. So, so we're still early, mm, right? Mm. We need to create this, this, this uh, brand equity, right. or brand health. Yeah. Uh, so we also try to, you know, we measure brand health, you know, at the beginning of the year. And then we run our campaign, we measure our brand health at the end of right. the year, we will be running an exercise, you know, by the end nice. of the year to see where we are on that spectrum. So you see your direct traffic, how much how it's growing, or like right. the brand term, how it's growing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. We have obviously also SEOs, SEMs, mm. um, um, you know, we we run also GDNs on Google sometimes. So okay. it depends on we yeah. run banners on on some of the online platforms. Okay. So so we we try to cover it all. Yeah. And and we try we're still also learning of as a, as a company what makes the biggest impact. Makes sense. And how do you come up with a marketing budget? So we're a small organization, we're a startup. We've mm -hmm. raised money off of the of the venture market or family office market and all of that. So we don't really it's different from if you were speaking to some a guest from a larger organization where they tell you it's five percent of revenue mm. or ten percent of revenue of two percent of no. We have a market we, we, we look at our what well, how much money we have in the bank <laughs> yeah. and we see how much we need in the operation working capital and everything else goes to market. <laughs> okay, <right? laughs> nice. We, we don't distribute dividends. <laughs> we don't have retained earnings. Mm. Um, we don't have CapEx projects anymore. We look at what, how much we have and how much we're looking to raise. And we spend the rest, all of the rest on marketing, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Great strategy. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> I mean, you have, you have, you have to grow your business. Yeah, man. Right? You need way. your that's, marketing yeah. to grow your business. I mean, <laughs> for me, as, as, as Ed, as someone leading the organization, I spent mm. the first year focusing on learning the technology and R&D and all of that. Then I spent a lot of time um, working with OEMs on what machines we need because it's new tech, right? You need to develop your own process, understand it, understand what equipment can produce, cannot produce, modify these equipment, develop that process, design it. Mm. And then you spend time on building that what you have designed or imagined or learned in the past. But now that everything is set and is running mm. smoothly, I spend most of my time on sales and marketing, right? right? Because that's yeah. what's going to drive the business forward. Me and me, man, hundred percent. We also have we try so. Another another thing that I wanted to talk about from a marketing perspective, we figured like what happened with you when people try our product, they love it, right? Right. Mm -hmm. um, especially also when moms give the product to their kids absolutely the kids don't even know the difference but they're giving right. them something that's so much healthier my kids them. didn't know the difference exactly and you feel good giving it to them especially when you're buying kebabs for example there right you at go. least now you know that it's clean kebab exactly and that is not processed with a lot of uh, medicine right so mm. so so what we see is is once people try it the conversation becomes a lot easier right right you're right so we have two food trucks. Yeah. We have one sitting in DWTC right now serving that area for, for, for the next three months. Nice. And and this is how we drive traffic. We drive we drive conversion. The more we drive trial, yeah. the more we drive conversion. Hundred percent. And word of mouth marketing. And samplings at, yeah. at Spinney's, mm -hmm. at Carrefour, at Grandios. We do a lot of sampling and we see the conversion when people try. You know, yeah. in the in in the sampling station in supermarket. Whoa, this is this actually tastes great. They forget to compare it to You're whatever right. it is, right? Oh wow, this is eight grades. Oh, it's plant based. Oh, yeah. no cholesterol. Blah blah blah. Okay, let's take it. 
Yeah, man. And the branding looks pretty cool. Thanks. So, you know, like I open my free, I open my freezer every day, obviously. Right. And there's always the packs there and right. they, you know, the colors, they, you know, make, they make the freezer look nice. Right. Right. So when we started, you know, a lot of, you know, I have, I have some U.S. investors with me. Uh, I have some regional investors. They all pushed me to go with one of the largest, you know, uh, or, or leading uh, branding uh, houses globally. Mm -hmm. And we went with a regional uh, branding agency and on all levels, everybody wanted to say, uh, everybody challenged me on the name Switch. Switch mm -hmm. is a name that I just came up with because all suggestions when you brief a marketing agency are Planta, yeah. Plante, yeah. uh, Green Vera. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, guys, I'm not, I'm pitching a product, Switch. Mm -hmm. It has a call to action. It's a reminder. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily plant-based in your face, Yeah, right? People will know that it's plant-based, but mm. they should know it's a good product. Plant-based is just an extra value. But yeah. if the product is good, then you go to whether it's plant-based, whether it's natural, whether all of that. But the product needs to be good. Right. And then I didn't want it to look green. And, and, and obviously, I didn't want to... Because now you go to the to the vegetable section, everything is green, yeah. right? Everything green is the color of good. Mm. We decided to be more modern. We decided to be more, more avant-garde, if you wanna, mm. if you wanna put it, you know, have packaging that is, that is cool, uh, that is modern. Because also our, our, our consumers mm. are are adventurers, are cool, are 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 wanna take care of themselves, yeah. right? So that that was that was the idea around it. Yeah, <laughs> nice. <laughs> And you're right, man. We didn't pay a million dollars <coughs> for it. It's, no. I, actually, the, our logo was done on crowd design or design crowd or something yeah, it looks for like amazing. 500 bucks. Yeah. And then I yeah. and then I changed it myself a little bit. Switch. Such a um, nice name. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Um, because you're right. The others in the market, the other players in the market, they you'll be like, okay, expect it to be something exactly. like that. Exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. Nice. How are you building a brand? just by remaining uh, true to our core right uh it's, it's for me the brand building the brand is, is very easy it comes natural you have the right product mm. you have the right um let's say propositions and you don't deviate with from them so the products are good and any product that will ever come out of switch on the market will be a great product right other companies launch with 20 30 40 skus all of that that are on average mediocre, that are selling, you know, plant and all. No, no, no. We have only five SKUs and now we're launching chicken very soon, which will remain core to our values. Number one is taste. Number two is health, right? Claims. So they, we're always going to be non-GMO. We're always going to be gluten-free. So even our breaded chicken will be gluten-free. Mm. We're always going to be short little ingredients, vegan. So the brand will be associated to our core values. Good product, healthy and clean product. Right. Right. And we talk about it every day. Right. So <clears throat> if we think about it from a from a different perspective, so today you think um, Apple, you 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 imagine something already, you feel something, right? Um, Nike, the same thing. The W Hotel, same thing. Ferrari, same thing. Uh, now you think Volkswagen, you don't, you know, there's not the feeling of Ferrari or Porsche, right? Right, or the M series of BMW, right? Right. Um, you you think Reebok, you don't feel Nike, and you think um, Hyatt hotels, you don't feel the W. From that perspective, how are you building switch? So obviously what you talked about are differences between luxury brands mm. and, and, and mainstream brands, right? Volkswagen doesn't mm. want to be Mercedes. It serves a different consumer category, mm. right? Same with, with, with uh, 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 Sheraton is not a W, right? Um, it has a different consumer 
target or consumer segment that goes to the W. I know a lot of people that don't like the W because it's mm. a lot of party, a lot of music, it's very loud. Uh, maybe the beds are not as comfortable as a Western, but the person, the, 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 the W client is looking for hip, is looking for fashion, is looking for a lifestyle, is going to have music at the lobby, yeah. uh, drinks at the bar, all of that, different consumer. Mm -hmm. With Switch, we're trying to build a brand that will always make you feel good. Right. Right? Yeah, here we go. Because consumers <laughs> should not question, yes. ever question that feel good factor mm. when they're consuming it. Yeah. Right? They should never doubt that. Um, they should, consumers should be able to replicate, you know, yesterday at, at DWTC, I had a friend who had, a, who had a burger, double smash with cheese, right? Yeah. He told me, man, I feel like I'm eating, like I stopped eating burgers because it's so fatty and mm. I have cholesterol and triglyceride issues. But yeah. here I feel like I'm having the same experience without the guilt. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Right? Without that guilt. Without the worry as well. Without the worry and mm. without the guilt. So you go to the gym, I go to the gym. If I eat, if I eat a piece of meat or if I eat anything that has meat in the, in the, in the afternoon, um, I, can't, I can't move anymore. Mm. I'm like done. Right here, you can actually work out before and after. A lot of people consume um, sh protein shakes. Yeah, protein shakes are synthetic proteins. They create mm. molds on your liver long term. They have a lot of issues related to it. They don't necessarily taste good. They have a lot of sugars and mm -hmm. fat, and you get hungry two hours later, and you drink them alone on the corner really quickly. Yeah. Now, what if you work out and you can go have a perfect meal with your kids and with your family? that is high in protein, low in fat, so it gives you that protein uh, uh, intake that you need, Yeah. Uh, but it gives you the fulfillment as well, and it tastes good, you can right. enjoy it, and you can have the same social experience with your family. Absolutely. Right? So that's, we want to create, you know, we want to switch to be um, <clears throat> coupled with, you know, trust, good food, and, 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 and better feeling. Good, man. And uh, for the viewers to know to uh, as well, I don't use any oil, not a drop of oil in any of your products, not one drop, because it has so much water in it. And it's unlike the the fat of animals, it, fat animal fat sticks. Correct. The fat of switch doesn't switch, it doesn't, uh, <laughs> doesn't uh, right. stick, right. right? It doesn't burn and stick. Absolutely. So I never use oil. It melts. Never, never, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, the so, fat that we use mm -hmm. is in the form of coconut fat, right, and sunflower, yeah, right. So yeah. which is our, our healthy fat, non-animal fats. Mm -hmm. Now you're on the extreme side. Yeah, most people want to again have a seamless transition from meat. So if you take yeah. a meat a piece of meat from your fridge, yeah, the my, bonds, Anna, what, my point is, you don't need to. You don't need to. Like even for these people that think they need to use oil, they don't need to use oil. Yeah, yeah, they can try. Yeah, but we tell them use it the same way you right. use meat. We yeah. don't want to change yeah, 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 consumer yeah. behavior. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Cool. What are your thoughts on using influencers or known individuals to promote brands, and how are you using this channel? I have mixed thoughts and mixed feelings about that. Um, I think influencer marketing is good to a certain point, um, but there is there should be a lot of thoughts going into which influence to use, on what medium, and what what is the message, right? So today, unfortunately, most influencers are looked at paid marketing, right? So the credibility of that influencer needs to represent the brand, mm. the the way of life of that mm. influencer, the discipline, the messaging, the core values. Right? If you see an influencer is doing, you know, any brands from from you know both ends of the spectrum, it has no credibility. The, right. the, the 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 customer is or the viewer is smart enough to see, okay, this guy's getting paid. He's gonna do it. Right. He's gonna do one post and leave. We try to look at influencers and not necessarily, we, we never done anything with mega or, or, or macro influencers. We do micro or, ma or, or mi you know, mini, what, whatever you call them, the yeah. nano influencers, nano influencers, right? Yeah. That have their followings, even if it's 20, 30, 50, 100K, but these, they're credible vis-a-vis -vis their followers, right? right? So when they say the product is good, they really think it's good. When we actually give them the product, we tell them, try the product. If they don't come back telling us, oh my God, this is like amazing. We mm -hmm. really love it. 
and they can show it in you know um we have influencers that we work with that you know when we start they're like no plant-based meat i'm like okay let's talk right what do you know try it <laughs> tell me how it tastes yeah. tell me how you feel after mm. you try it so now those influencers that we work with that are you know the small influencers love working with us because they love the brand right right mm. um now at the same time you need to have reach you need to have people know you but mm. again it it's it's the quality of the influencer it's the messaging right it's the way you deliver it um and it's the personality of the influencer at the end of the day and how it uh, and how it resonates with the value of, values of switch mm -hmm. a lot of influencers are very difficult to deal with man yeah. we stop yeah, yeah, right, yeah. right there mm -hmm. you're right but it is definitely valuable because you just said it right it creates reach it helps you not only with reach but help you with creating that trust like you said instead of you putting up banners in the face of users every single day at if an influencer, if I if yeah. I ask an influencer if they're willing to to cooperate and they tell me here's our price list, I stop it right away. Yeah. Mm, okay. Right. If they yeah. tell me what are you talking about, what's the products, yeah. what are the what are the what are the pillars, what are, what's the proposition of the product, what's what's the values, then we stop. Then we talk. Got it. Good stuff. All right, man. We're running out of time, so I. Um, do you have any asks for the viewers or listeners? No, I mean, I ask you, so Switch is available in the frozen section, in the plant-based sections of all uh, major retailers, uh, Carrefour, Spinney's, Waitrose, uh, Grandiose, uh, Lulu, uh, Union Co-op, Abu Dhabi Co-op. Amazing. Go try it for yourself. Um, it's on Talabat, it's on Karim, um, it's on Click Cuisine, it's on Carrefour Online. Give it a try. All I ask for, you know, a lot of times, the same way I do with friends, with influencers, with give it a try. See how you like it. I mean, uh, uh, and, and, and then you make your own decision. Right. I'm not trying to influence you, but give it a try. Let your kids try it. Um, today, you have decisions to make at home. You know, what you're feeding your kids is, is going to affect their future one way or the other. Right. If you have the opportunity to feed them delicious tasty food that is clean and healthy um why not yeah why not i don't i cannot myself find the i mean i feed it to my kids we eat it at home we don't eat meat um i don't see other than people not knowing about it there's not a reason for them not consuming right yeah man and um i told you last time um when i when actually your chef told me that it's made of green pea, so I use protein powder, protein shake, vegan, right. uh, made of green pea, and that's the only protein that I have because it's basically you know, not uh, made of uh, soy beans and right. right which so is soya is an allergen. It's right. very highly genetically modified, right. so we don't touch it. Right, and that's the reason I didn't eat previously the meat alternatives okay because most of them most of them are soy based you're soy right based, right? right and you're the only one i think now in the market that uh, Here, uh, there's also i think beyond meat beyond but they have a different right okay uh, yeah um i used to use beyond but i was not sure that it was green pea it's it's peas mm. it doesn't have a soy uh not to my knowledge okay but I, f I felt that yours uh, switch was cleaner because I remember I yeah, look at the ingredients. We have a lot shorter list of ingredients. We don't use any synthetics in it. Uh, this is the major difference. Mm. Um, because I know Beyond very well. And of course, Beyond is one of the first, right? So I started yeah, eating it. But I, um, I remember there was something in it. It's a that, different price point. It's off. different ingredients. Um, they look at things differently from mm -hmm. how we do. Do you think personal branding is important for CEOs like you? And if yes, why? And how can CEOs go about it? So many CEOs that I work with, that I know on a personal level, they don't invest in personal branding. And the ones that do, they all say, and including myself, it's worth it. It gives him a lot of opportunities. It helps him attract better talent. It helps him attract investors. It helps them learn about so many different things and it helps them with their PR. It helps them, you know, be on TV more, be on and so forth. So I know that you invest in, in personal branding, I maybe don't. maybe not as much, <laughs> but you do. Like you're on panels. I see you on panels. You I speak get invited to panels. Right. 
So but that's... I, I, I invest zero, I think. Mm. In so terms I, of money or in terms of your time? No, in terms of my time, when I ask to be on panels, mm. usually if the subject is interesting and if I think I can add value, I always accept. Mm. And uh, and I think people see value in what in what we do at Switch and what I what I do and what I say, right. and I get invited. I was on a panel yesterday. I'll be on a panel at the World Green Government Summit in a couple of weeks, uh, Future Hospitality Summit in in ten days. So I I I voice um, my opinion. Uh, I voice what we do at Switch. Uh, I talk about the ecosystem, the food system. Again, I'm. I've been part of the food system on both spectrums for over 20 years now. So I understand I started at the basic commodities and now I'm on and I'm, I'm in food tech. So yeah. I understand the whole spectrum. So I believe I can add value. I've been on part of uh, Abu Dhabi food security executive committees. I've been on food security uh, um, uh, advisory uh, roles, all of that. Right. But do I invest personally? Like if you look at my uh, first of all, I'm a very private person. I'm not the kind of guy who, you, I don't have TikTok, I don't have Snapchat, I have Instagram, I just have my friends and family that I follow and follow me, and right. my account's private. I, I, I'm very private when it comes to my personal life and I would like to keep it that way. Mm. Um, I value privacy a lot. Um, my LinkedIn, you know, it's always a, a, a debate between me and my, you know, a marketing agency or my, or the PR uh, people we, we work with that, you know, you need to, you need to write, you need to post, you need to, I, I do very little of that. I try, but it's really not me. Yeah. But I understand the value of it. But first of all, you need to have the bandwidth, you need to have the time, you need to have the personality. It doesn't really come very natural to me. <laughs> yeah, it How, doesn't come natural to most people. <laughs> right. But I believe that as a founder, mm. Right, your personal brand, your brand is your personal brand. Yeah. So today I am Switch. For the size of Switch, mm. I am. I represent Switch. I'm the face of Switch. Right. Right. Uh, not only vis-a-vis -vis consumers, but vis-a-vis -vis investors as well. So investors, especially in the venture world, they invest in the person. Of course. They invest in the business model, mm. in the in the in the vision, uh, in the scalability, all of that, but they, they're trusting you with yeah, their the team. Right. So you and the team, obviously mm. the team that you're bringing on board. But when we're fundraising, when we're talking to governments, I represent Switch. Right. So my personal brand is immediately integrated into Switch. Correct. Without, without necessarily putting an effort behind it. Right. Um, and with time, I think, you know, as Switch grows, it will grow, but I don't really... I don't. I don't promote Edward Hamoud. I, mm. I promote Switch and Edward being leading Switch. Right. Right. Yeah. And as long as it adds value to Switch, and as long as you know people see value in me leading this organizations and the value that I bring to the table and the, and the opinions that I bring to the table, then then I'm all for it. Yeah. Makes sense. <clears throat> and I guess everybody, every CEO would do it in a diff uh, for different reasons. So last week I interviewed uh, Tarek from um, the, the CEO region here for Capital.com. And he does it. He loves doing it. And uh, he gets a lot of you know, views, a lot of you know eyeballs on him and on, on the brand. Right. And he attracts the right talent. And for him, talent is the most important yeah, for, you know. for his industry is different yeah. they're providing a service yeah obviously when you talk about banks when you talk about insurance companies when you talk about service companies right. your relationship is with that person right mm -hmm. we have we're a product company um, yeah so people are consuming our product they don't need to call me to say where do i need to invest or what's your opinion should i invest in capital markets or bonds markets right, right. now equities or gold yeah uh, he's a source in his industry people are a source of trust. So for example, in my private uh, uh, investment, uh, I I talk to one guy within a bank. Right. I don't care what the bank says, it's what one guy advises me to do. So that's probably his angle. Mm. For us, no, we're providing a product. The product, as long as the product is there, it's accessible, it's good, it's consistent. Yeah. yeah people don't point. need to talk to me. All right, my man, good having you. Thank Thanks you for, for having coming. me. Thanks, man. I enjoyed Thank the talk. Cheers. <laughs>